Mama, it's Danger Man cooking. Oh, no. Hello, and welcome to Danger Man cooking. My name is Gary Schmidt. And I'm Steven Schlissel. On today's show, we're going to travel down the road to Gray's at Manchester, the newest restaurant sensation on Bonnet Street at the site of the former lawyer and the baker. And we're going to then bring Chef Michael back to the kitchen here, and he's going to show us a few of his culinary tricks of the trade and some of the dishes that he will be cooking at the restaurant, should you choose to go there. So without further ado, we're going to head down the street, and Gary will be back with you in a few minutes. Welcome to Danger Men Cooking. And I'm here today with Connie Sturgis, owner of Manchester's newest restaurant, Gray's. This site here is the site of the former lawyer and baker restaurant, and believe me, this is a totally different place. Hello, Connie. Hi, Stephen. Can you tell the folks at home what brought you here, where you came from, and for one thing, why Gray's? Well, it was an idea of one of my servers who was in the ad business, and we talked about it. It seemed like a very Vermont name. We like to do farm-to-table cooking, locally produce foods as much as possible. And Gray's is also something you can say when you're nibbling or eating, which we hope is going to be the case here. And that's G-R-A-Z-E. Correct. Not the color gray or... No, not gray like Gray's. Gray's like when you say before dinner. Right. Not Grazie. It's uh, Gray's. Uh -huh. It is Gray's. And so... I know you've had prior, a lot of prior restaurant experience. Tell me where, where you've been before and what brought you to Manchester? Well, I think I'd like to start with where I was born and raised. It was a dairy farm in Minnesota. And my father and mother, um, we had an orchard, we had a large garden, we raised dairy cows, we had chickens, sometimes pigs. And I think that whole idea of locally fresh food was just something that I've had with me my whole life, obviously. And growing up in Minnesota, um, I left after high school, but it, I was surrounded by freshness and culinary, not so much culinary, um, integrity, but it was fresh food. So after high school, I went traveling. I was into mountain climbing, backpacking, and I headed to Europe for a while. I obviously experienced amazing food there. I lived with a family in Norway and Germany. I went to India, Nepal, and all along the way, there were these spices, these tastes, these smells. And it was not only the people, but it was the food that they, they grew, it made, and I ate that stuck with me. And so after that experience, I moved to Montana and started a couple of restaurants there, mostly steak, elk, bison, antelope, meats that I had never had before. But I learned a lot also about seafood, ironically. And um, from there, I went to Nantucket, where I stayed 28 years. And that is where I cultivated, I think, a more um, refined outlook. Great chefs go to Nantucket, great food. And I was close to New York, Boston, which we frequented often. And with the children, we wanted them to experience not only fresh clams, oysters, etc., but um, just sushi, culinary you know, experiences, ethnic experiences. Mm -hmm. So. Um, food has just been a big part of my life. I love to cook. I love to cook. So I imagine on Nantucket, seafood was one of your staples, I, Yes. as would be most of the restaurants on the island. Do you, are you carrying that tradition over here, or is it, of course, it's a little more difficult to, right. to get fresh seafood, although Danger Men Cooking has been to Earth, mm -hmm. Earth and Sea, mm -hmm. to their operation. They're going to Boston 
yes. three or four times a week and bringing yeah. the fresh stuff back. And uh, I think whatever stuff. you you want, you can get in this market today. I think we just have to watch our price point because my concept here was to have a prefix menu as much as possible at a certain price point, and that means we have to look for specials. Obviously, we have to look at what's fresh and local. And um, always, I like to have a little bit of seafood, something seafood on the menu. This place was formerly the yeah. lawyer and the baker. baker. Mm -hmm. And you've transformed, especially the dining room here, into something very cozy, something a lot mm -hmm. more vermont -y. And you've got beautiful art on the walls, some killer rugs, if I may say so. And um, this is just real homey. It doesn't seem like this huge restaurant where it's, you're going to be overwhelmed. Please give us some I idea of your hours of operation. We are open um, 11 to 4 for lunch. We are open 5 to 9 for dinner, closed on Tuesdays. Our menu on Sunday night, we are going to experiment with small plates on Sunday. So it will be maybe eight to ten items, and I hope in the price range of about four to ten dollars per plate. So you can come in and get a couple of things. You can share with a group. We have beer and wine. Kevin Harrington from East Dorset built my bar with the help of my best friends from Wilmington, Vermont. I wanted to have this room almost feel like someone was coming to my house for mm -hmm. dinner. But I wanted to incorporate a small bar, but it's really a table. Um, there's four stools, and we use it just for seating. And people love to come and have a glass of wine or beer, have a couple courses, have the whole menu. But it's really worked out as I planned. You know, I really am thrilled because I saw what could happen here and painted and did it. My best friend, one of my best friends from Nantucket, I brought up all of her artwork, which is contemporary art, which I love. Um, it's a mix, you know, oriental rugs, contemporary art, cozy feeling, homey feeling, and then in the cafe, as people will see, it's a little bit fresher, um, lighter. It's a cafe look with the wallpaper and the wainscoting and the chair rail. And despite being on the main road here on Route 30, um, near the Spiral Press Cafe and the bookstore, uh, it's relatively quiet. It's not no. not very. I not love a lot the of noise. I love the location. I love to know. You know, I'm so excited about what's going on across the street, with the Spiral Press in Northshire, mm -hmm. and the new rotary or roundabout that they're uh -huh. going to be building. So. I, I chose this space not only because it felt charming, but it also has a great location. Now, I, I have to tell the viewers that when I came in here to set this meeting up, Connie made me, if not the best vegetable sandwich I've ever had. I can't, my memory doesn't go back any further than that. And uh, it was very special when it wasn't like going to a sub shop and getting just a the veggies splattered on with a little oil and vinegar. There was marinations, there was smoke, there was some great cheese. The roll that came it came on was was perfect and uh, Thanks. I wasn't even hungry and I gobbled the whole thing down and um, where I'm going with this is that there's a lot of vegetarians, of course there's lots of vegans too, mm -hmm. uh, is there going to be usually at least one Entree in, in the evening, always. Yes, always. We always have a vegetarian option. You can get a la carte, as I said before. Um, I'm very, very sensitive to that. Vermont is is all about, to me, food and um, politics and alternative lifestyles and eating styles, and it's important to carry on. Well, we've, we've dealt with a number of local farmers and producers mm -hmm. Uh, who hopefully, when they see this on television, yeah. they'll come to you with their with their products. Of course, in the middle of the winter, not too much fresh stuff is available. Um, yes, we're finding new purveyors or 
local produce and local um, cheese makers all the time, and it, that is so exciting. That we get really excited about. Now, if somebody wants to stop in for a lunch, basically it's six days every day except for Except Tuesday? for Tuesday. Closed on Tuesday. And what could they expect? Can, can they get takeout? or? Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, we always have sort of a set menu with sandwiches, the hot and cold sandwiches. I make salads every morning, fresh, and I love to make soups. So I have four, five soups every day. Mm -hmm and we make all of our own stocks. We have vegetable stock, chicken stock, veal stock, and um, I think that is the foundation for any mm -hmm. sauce or any stock or soup. So, yeah, they can get mix and match. They can build a sandwich. We feature sandwiches, but they can do whatever their heart desires. You're not baking your own bread at this point. No, just some breadsticks and lavash Mm -hmm. We put now on the tables for dinner, and if I have leftovers, I, I send it out with a soup the next day. Uh -huh. But no, I, I'm not going to make bread. There's too many great bread bakers around I can use. So. When I was in here, I see you have a great staff. Michael, your son is your, your chef. He's 23. He's um, been our sous chef, or was our sous chef at our restaurant in Nantucket for two years. He's been working in Aspen in the winter at Syzygy and up at Little Nell Sundeck. Um, and I think there he met extraordinary chefs as well. And has, underlining all of this, he has a passion, passion for food and a wonderful palate. And he's creative. So I'm very, very lucky because I trust him. We collaborate. We don't always agree, but um, He's just a great source of pride for me, and I love having him here. And he is making, producing, um, just engaging people with some of the most amazing food. It's just fun. It's really fun. So chances are uh, an existing client could come a week or two later and see, an, that's not an entirely different uh, menu, prep, you know, something else that's in, in, uh, in season or a brand new creation that he might Completely. just rip up? Yeah, okay. yeah. He does, I think, retain, you know, what he had made. He does a lot of things with polenta, um, risottos. He loves to make risotto. We do lamb shanks. He has um, whipped up some scallop dishes with diver scallops and using a little beet foam that is exquisite. Mm -hmm. Um, we use a lot of, like I said before, stocks, and then he'll do herbs. He uses a wand. He's been making um, intricate details with Chinese dumplings and fresh spring rolls. It's just beautiful. It's lovely. You're open from 11 until into the evening, but you're often here at 7 or 7.30 yeah. in the morning every day preparing for each day. Yes not to mention all the background of ordering your produce, Correct. your meats, and whatever, and yeah. that's, uh, it's, it's not an easy business and, uh, in any economy. No, and, yeah, right. Um, well, when I was in here the other day eating this wonderful sandwich, I was saying goodbye, and one of the servers went up to Connie and said, the woman in the, at the large table in there said, this is the best salad she had ever had, and that's that's kind of amazing because you would think a salad is a salad is a salad, and uh, mm. I know comments like that kind of keep you going. I mean, when you hear oh, when you hear okay. people raving and yeah. um, appreciating what you're doing, because it's called the culinary art, and it is an art. It's not. It is a business like everything else, but. Um, well, we're going to take Michael into the studios at GNAC Television uh, with Gary, and we can see what kind of art they can make together. Okay, we're back from the visit with Connie at Gray's in Manchester, and I'd like to now introduce Michael, the chef, who will be uh, visiting with us. Hey. Nice to meet you, Gary. How are you? Good. Doing very well. Glad to have you here. And... Uh, I think you're going to do some tricks for us today. Yeah, I'm just going to cook some simple stuff, very similar to what I would have on my menu. Okay. And uh, hopefully things that are simple enough to do at home quite right. easily. All right, so give us an idea of uh, one of the first things we're going to do. 
Well, first I'm going to cut up some tomatoes and roast them in a very uh -huh. simple manner that uh, helps keep them for a very long time and brings out a lot of their savory flavor. Okay. Um, and then make a salad and a couple uh, fish dishes that don't require too much effort. So. Okay. And uh, in terms of produce, uh, do you get your stuff locally? Uh, I, you would, I would love to. Uh, I mean, I've gotten some root vegetables recently, but, you know, considering it's February, it right. hasn't been exactly easy, but the uh, proteins around this area are fantastic. Right. They're really right. great. So you've uh, been there just a short time, so, but I imagine through the summer you'll be getting oh, yes. stuff I'm pretty excited yeah. about it. Right. Actually. Good. Well, why don't we get started? Absolutely. And uh, show us what you have uh, to do with the tomatoes. Well, here I've got uh, some simple grape tomatoes. If you ever have too many of these at your house, you can do this very easily. Uh, grab a couple lids. A uh, serrated knife probably works best, unless you have a very sharp knife. Um, and we're just going to fill this up. We're going to have them. I'm going to put the other top on it. And uh, just... Oh, that's a great way. Yep. Nice. Like that. Simple. Yep, and now they're all halved. Um, I have a tray that is uh, covered in kosher salt. Mm-hmm. Got that down here. And now this is uh, similar to what a sun-dried tomato might be like. Uh, we're just going to put these uh, inside flesh up and uh, place them all around here. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Yeah. Nice. And uh, we're going to bake them at a low temperature. Lower the better. You can even do it overnight in an oven, just to pile it on. But for uh, our sake, I'm going to do it in under an hour. So you bake these just as they are? Just as just they are. Just on the salt? That's mm -hmm. it. When they come out, you'll see they kind of look like a sun-dried tomato that have uh -huh. been nicely seasoned from the salt, but not too much. And uh, there's many ways to store them. I like to put them in a container, a ball jar with olive oil, basil, thyme, garlic, and they can just sit in there forever. Okay, so I'm going to go put these in the toaster oven, 250 degrees. And how long? Do you think that was going to take? At 250 degrees, I would say it would probably take about 40 minutes. Okay, 40 minutes. All right, good. Okay. And you use those uh, in terms of your menu, menu in what capacity? Um, usually I use them, you know, in, in just simple salads or, like I said, on top of a scallop dish that we'll be doing today. Okay. Um, but uh, really, they are fantastic on just about anything right. as a side all by its own. It's a uh, general garnish in ways. In ways, yes. Okay, good. So uh, now we'll move on to a salad that we'll be preparing. Okay. Um, we're going to candy some walnuts for that salad. There's blue okay. cheese, some fresh fruit, apples and grapes, and I've got a couple different kinds of nice... Uh, Organic lettuces, uh, gem, tango, and an oak. Okay, so let's see. We have here, this is the... Tango. The tango. And we have an oak is the more broader leaf. Oak. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we have the gem over here. Okay, looks good. All right. So what do we want to do with the uh, walnuts? For the walnuts, I have an egg here. Okay. Uh, we're going to separate the uh, yolk from the white and put the white in a mixing bowl. Okay. Here yep. you go. Okay. We're going to put the white in and the mixing you can bowl. Save the yolk. I'll keep that for later. Okay. Always good. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. So we're just going to whisk this okay. until the whites form soft peaks. And this is going to help coat the walnuts so that the sugar is going to stick to them. And then when we bake it, the whites are going to form a nice crust around the walnuts, so they'll stay nice and crunchy, as well as hold all of that sweetness from the sugar. All right, so the walnuts get whipped. I mean, the uh, whites get whipped. Walnuts go in the egg, and then coat it with sugar. Yes. And we put them on a pan. Yes, we do. We bake it 350 bake degrees. It. All right. Should take about eight to ten minutes. And then this salad that we have is just going to be lightly dressed in a vinaigrette, which I will make. Okay, good. And onto a plate, correct? Yes, indeed. Okay. Almost there. As you can see, it's slowly starting to form a peak and become frothy. Good. All right. 
so it's starting to hold its shape. I'm just going to pour those walnuts in there. I'm going to wash this uh, yeah, whisk there. there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to toss these walnuts around and coat them just lightly in sugar. This is where it's up to you. You can use these in a dessert, uh, salads. You can use them in really any way you'd like. Um, so you can dress them with how much sugar you, you really desire. I like the uh, sweetness with the apples and the blue cheese for the salad, so put a decent amount of sugar on here, just so I can see it coating them. Just pour these all over the place. Okay. Great. Let's separate them a little bit. Yep, let's stick together. And we'll probably need to turn them once in the oven okay. to make sure they cook evenly. So we're going to just place them in the oven for how long? Uh, we'll say roughly uh, six minutes for now. Turn it, check on it, see okay. how it's doing. Uh, in the meantime, we can make a vinaigrette. Okay. What do you need right here? for that? I have everything just over here. I've okay. got some mustard, which is a binding agent. helps emulsify the vinaigrette. We're going to use balsamic, olive oil, and a little honey to cut the acid. Is that uh, Dijon? Yes, it is. Dijon, okay. Dijon mustard, just about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. So we're making enough dressing for oh, one or two salads? Probably actually three or four right now. Okay. I'll just make them so you guys right. can see. Um, a little honey. I just like to give it a nice little squeeze. Agave nectar would be good. If you wanted to put some garlic in there, you could. That was exactly a tablespoon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to start with the balsamic. I'm going to put just about a cup, maybe a little less for now, a little less than a cup, um, if you'd like to hold that mm -hmm. for a second. So this is where uh, having two people can help, but you can do it on your own. Slowly add the olive oil. So this is the <coughs> similar process to emulsifying something like hollandaise sauce. Exactly. The oil goes in very slowly. If you get too much oil in too fast, it will be, uh, it won't bind together, it'll right. overload the it'll vinegar, and it will separate, which isn't always a bad thing. You can just shake it up and put it on your salad anyway, but for learning's sake, we're going to emulsify this one. Uh, that should probably be about good. Two whisks, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. It smells great. All right. And that's the uh, dressing right there. Okay. Give that a taste. I've got some tasty food in here. Make sure it's good. It's delicious. All right, so let's uh, cut up some grapes and apples. You want to do one or the other? Sure. I'll do some over here. Just do apple. Apple. Mm. I like my pieces of apple to be... Uh, Pretty big. You can just have the couple of those grapes. Okay. We don't need all that many. Okay. So I'm just going to cut off a side of this apple. Actually, we could do the grapes the same way the you same did the tomatoes. The same way we did the tomatoes. Right? Let me show nice. them. <laughs> Why not? Why not, right? All right. I like to put these in uh, with my Voila. salad greens. I like them to be dressed as well. Sometimes at the restaurant, I'll garnish with some fresh fruit. Right. Make sure that those go in there. So grapes, apples, and blue cheese. Classic, delicious combination. Blue cheese is a little messy. Nice and spoon. I have to taste. That's good. Sometimes uh, when you get dressings using balsamic vinegar, people don't know how to control the Intensity. Intensity, exactly. Oh, the the honey helps there. Yeah, so this is really good. All right, so we got our blue cheese, our grapes, and our apples, and our little greens. Let's dress just it up. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a Something little bit. It's not too intense. Like that? Yeah, that's great. Oh, I've right. got gloves okay. here. All right. Make this a little easier for myself. Toss this around. Let me check those. Check those walnuts. Walnuts. It looks like they need another four or five minutes, so we can just finish this off with those. Should I turn them over? Yeah, give them just a flip. Uh, flip them over. <laughs> Add a little Let's bit just uh, show what we have going here so far. You can see the. Uh, uh, you want them a little, a little brown, crispier. crispier. Yes, okay. they're gonna. The whites there are going to uh, 
caramelized with the sugar right. a little bit. So you can see that the white is still, egg whites are still white. White. And so we want them to turn a little browner. But they're crisping up already pretty well. The salad can stay there for a minute. It's only going to take a couple more minutes. Yeah. I think we can uh, clean some shrimp and get them in a marinade for the next course. Okay. If you want to clean the shrimp, I'll make the marinade over here. Okay. And as they clean them, we can just put them in here. So this is so, a very simple marinade. So explain to us uh, what this dish is. Uh, it's a Spanish uh, shrimp a la plancha dish. It's very simple. You can do it at home very easily. Um, it's just uh, shrimp. They're going to sit in olive oil. Uh, this spice that I have, uh, Spanish sweet smoked paprika. If you can't find this, uh, regular smoked paprika will work. Just uh, go a little lighter because it's uh, got a little bit of an intensity to it. This is a little bit more balanced. So I'm just going to olive oil. I've got about a cup, a little less, for about uh, six shrimp. And I'm going to put in roughly a tablespoon or a little less of Spanish sweet smoked paprika. And shrimp are... Very porous. Yes. Right? So oh, yeah. when so you they marinate will, them. They will take on the flavors very well. They take on any flavors really well. Pretty fast, too. Pretty fast, exactly. So this marinade, shrimp can sit in there for uh, a week um, up to 10 minutes, you know? So right. So when, within works. 10 minutes, kind of like chicken. Yeah, exactly. They will uh, absorb the flavors very fast. Very fast. So I've got a, I put a teaspoon of chili flakes to about a tablespoon of Spanish smoked paprika. And I'm going to put in about a little bit more than a teaspoon of thyme, which is really lovely. I'm going to seal a little garlic from Gary over here, slice it thin or chop it up, however you want to do it, and uh, pop that in the marinade as well. And I'm peeling the shrimp over here. And for those of you who haven't peeled shrimp or cleaned fresh shrimp, uh, obviously the sh taking the shell off is no problem but down the back of the shrimp, you normally want to take a knife and just give a little cut because normally there is some sort of vein down there and the vein carries material from the shrimp that you really don't want to eat. So that's why we clean the shrimp uh, uh, just to make the experience of eating it a little more pleasant. There's a little vein. Just scrape that off. Okay. Right, so we've got four shrimp. It's perfect. Pop these in the marinade. Use some tongs. I've got my little tongs here. So as you can see, it's a very dark, rich marinade. It carries a lot of flavor. We're gonna cut this acid eventually, or this uh, spice eventually, with a little acid from a lemon. I'm just gonna let these sit in there for a minute. Check those walnuts. I think. Okay. How are they look? I think they look. Oh, they good. look great. Yeah, fantastic. So we'll give those a little okay. stir up, and so we'll add uh, these to the salad. You wanna? Yeah, sure. Dress this. Mix them in first. Or? Uh, the walnuts. I don't want them to get soggy, so I'm just gonna mm. place them on top. Top them. Okay. Let them st keep their crunch. Uh, all right. So, and if you prepare these walnuts, they maintain. Their crispness staying for out for a long time. For yep, you don't need to refrigerate them. That might actually make them soggy. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep them covered. Perhaps? Keep them covered. Okay. I like to put them in a ball jar or Ziploc bag. Yeah. Anything like that. So we get the grapes around there and the blue cheese flavors will be really great. And just a nice sprinkle of walnuts. Yes, indeed. And that's yeah. the salad. Easy, easy. Very good. Looks great. Very nice. So put that down here. Okay, uh, salad's done. We're going to uh, do the shrimp dish now. If okay. you could uh, have that lemon for me and okay. chop up the parsley. Okay. Just need a good, uh, good small, small handful of parsley chopped up fine. Okay. Um, as you can see, we're getting a pan really hot. The uh, cast iron pans work very well because they hold their heat. Um, if you don't have a cast iron pan, it's not an issue. You can just do it in a saute pan and take them out. But uh, I like the dr dramatic side to this pan. So I am just going to uh, take these shrimp right out of this marinade. As you can see, the pan is smoking, which is what we're looking for in this case. And I'm going to, very, I'm going to turn down the heat just a little bit, actually, as to not catch the oil on fire. 
And this dish you serve as an appetizer? As or? an appetizer, yes. And it comes cooking at the table. Oh. So. Kind of like a Chinese hot pot or something. Similar. Yeah. Similar, yeah. We'll put that off to the mm -hmm. side. So these are searing. We're just going to watch. And you can see the shrimp cooking up on the side. And once it gets to the middle there, we're going to flip them. Here's your parsley. Thank you. And here's your lemon. And the frame time, time frame for the shrimp, very fast. Just season one side, a little salt, a little pepper. Uh, you see these are now cooked through halfway. That looks good. Flip Whoa. them over. Yeah. <laughs> nice. They're making me hungry. Caramelization there. Oh, that looks so good. So now uh, the easiest part, big squeeze of lemon. Hopa. Some parsley. And it's done. And that's it. Beautiful. Look at that. Color, texture, flavor. Smell. Smells good, right? Good. Really good. Okay, so what is next on the menu? Well, we're going to do a little scallop course. I serve this quite often. Um, I really like the way it uses the cauliflower, and I think scallops and cauliflower scallops go very well go. together. And this is an entree? Entree. At the restaurant? Yes. Oh, good. Um, so we're going to start with uh, fluoriding a little bit of cauliflower. <coughs> and we're okay. going to use the scrap pieces to make a puree. OK, so I'm going to take apart the cauliflower and put, put the scraps in here. Yes, and uh, everything except <coughs> the green parts. So any white root, um, any extra <coughs> too big or too small cauliflower florets, anything like that can go in there. OK. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to season my scallops. I think it's always nice to season your proteins just a little bit before you use them. It helps to uh, draw the moisture out a little bit. So just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper on top of these guys. Over there. And I'm going to get my pans hot. I'm also going to do something. I'm going to add a little brown butter to this puree. Um, it adds a nuttiness, which goes really, really nicely with the scallops. As you can see, I have a little milk scalding over here. This is what we're going to put the cauliflower into to soften. And then we're going to use it all we're going to puree it all together, just a little bit of brown butter. So we want the stem pieces in the, in the milk? Yes, stem pieces, use it all up. You can cut them nice and small so they cook kind of fast. Okay. And in the meantime, I'm going to take a little cube of butter. I'm going to let it brown. Uh, now, brown butter is, <coughs> uh, take it past the clarified state. It starts to turn brown in between burnt and clarified. And it takes on a hazelnut-like aroma. That's really nice. So how did you come up with this dish? This is a nice combination. <clears throat> um, I just enjoy, I mean, I know brown butter is lovely. I like uh, to have something silky with my scallops. Uh -huh. So the puree idea, I've done <clears throat> this with root vegetables, celery root, parsley oh, root yeah. oh, good. as well. Yeah. Um, I like doing it with cauliflower because it really helps you use all of the cauliflower. And right. you get it in two textures. We're going to roast half of it. Uh huh. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, put a few pieces in? Yeah, put a couple in. pieces in there for flavor okay. and for it, so it's a substantial puree. Okay. That's Cauliflower that. Cauliflower in. And how big do you want the florets? Um, they can be pretty <coughs> small, so we can roast them in time. Like half that size, half I that believe, would be good. And we're going to mix, put those into a mixing bowl with olive oil and make sure they're completely covered in olive oil before we season them so it all sticks to them properly. And I'm going to get this pan getting a little hot. In the meantime, I'm going to check on those scraps. tomatoes I put in earlier, make sure they're on their way. And they are. Tomatoes look good. Keep this going. Now with the brown butter, <clears throat> it's really important to watch it because it will go from brown butter to burnt very quickly. So make sure that we get that one going. Okay, is this enough cauliflower here? Yes. Okay. Those in this bowl. Oh, right in the bowl. Yeah, right in the bowl. Oh, okay. I like to toss my uh, vegetables, make sure they get substantially coated in olive oil or whatever I'm using. Oops, like that. So the process is to marinate the cauliflower and then what? We're gonna season it. And we're gonna roast it. We have a roasting pan right underneath you. Okay. A little salt, a little <clears throat> pepper. Um, if you have any curry around, curry is lovely with the cauliflower. Uh -huh. It marries very well with these flavors. Adds a nice color to it as well. Mm -hmm. You want these 
Right in the oven. Just right in the oven. Right okay. The oven. So mm. as we can see, this butter is now completely melted. And it's slowly going to turn brown and take on a nutty flavor. If you're doing this at home, you can very easily tell when it's done just by when your kitchen smells really good. Butter is magical. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, review what we've got going here. We have the cauliflower in the milk. In the milk. The cauliflower braising in the oven. And we have the brown, brown butter. butter. Okay, the next step. The next step would be to sear the scallops. So I'm going to get this pan really hot. Have your bottom pans better. It holds its heat because I need the oil to be just about smoking when I put these scallops in in order to caramelize the sugars and the proteins. And we're searing. Searing. It's basically And then searing. we're going to baste, which is a French technique, mm -hmm. which really so. is the best way to taste the essence, I think, of uh, most seafood. So why don't you explain that? Um, well, I'm searing going to sear. So I'm going to put in really hot oil. Mm -hmm. And it's going to caramelize the sugars and the proteins. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add butter. I'm going to lightly uh, brown the butter around it while spooning the fat over the scallop so it cooks the whole thing evenly and adds the nice brown butter flavor. Um, I'm also going to probably put a little thyme, which is a hard herb. It can stand up to the high heat as well as a little garlic for flavoring. Um, as we can see here, this pan is now hot. Ready to go. And my cauliflower is about ready to, uh, it's just tender. Perfect for pureeing. So I like to uh, have those tongs, please. Yeah. Let's keep my distance in case something happens here. Um, just keep them far away. Now it's key to make sure the oil is smoking because when I put these in here, I'm lowering the temperature of the oil. So just get them in there. And, and when we're searing something like this, we want to make sure, like Michael has here, the elements are all around. Separated. They're not smothering each other. Otherwise, you're going to lower the temperature of right. the oil and, and it not won't, get a good it sear. It won't work. Right. Yeah, never put too many in a pan at once or else you'll overcrowd the whole thing and you'll overcook your scallops by the time you've gotten a good sear. Right. I like my scallops to be just like medium rare in the center. Yeah. Just warmed through in the center and completely cooked on the outside. And so turn the pan a little bit because as uh, you can never trust your heat sources. They're different all over the place. And then the basting <coughs> comes after the scallops are turned. Turned, yes. And then basting it with the brown butter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, as we can see, you can see the golden coming up on the sides. Right. It's probably pretty well seared, so I'm going to flip these over now. You can see we have a nice, oh, look at that brown light color. sear. Oh, those are beautiful. Mm. These down. And this is where I add a couple cubes of butter. Don't be worried, it's not. It's not like the butter is absorbing into the scallops. You're not eating that much. My clove of garlic and uh, little pieces of thyme. You can put it in whole thyme. The stem isn't important. Um, and now I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. I don't want to overcook my scallop. And I'm just going to spoon this hot fat. You can see right over the top. Oh, that looks good. Nothing like butter. Nothing like butter. <laughs> the French people know what's up with the butter. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take those off the heat now and just kind of let them finish cooking there while I quickly make this puree, which is very, very simple. The only trick to it is making sure that we don't put too much liquid in. We want it to be the right consistency, hold its shape and stick to the scallop. So. You want it to, uh, what's the final texture of this you want it to look like? It's gonna, it should be silky. It, mm -hmm. should, it should be uh, kind of... Uh, like a runny polenta type yeah, thing? Yeah, similar, like similar to that. Uh, so I'm going to first put in my uh, <coughs> cauliflower, mm -hmm. try to stay clean. And then uh, I can kind of slowly judge. I like to just barely fill maybe the cauliflower up to halfway and see uh -huh. what happens from there and save right. a little milk right. if I need it. The scallops look Better great. Better to put a little less in at first. first. You can always add. Exactly. Right. If you have a strainer, you can always strain the two out. Right. Separate them. Right. Um, my top is right here. So I'm going to start it on low. And it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more cauliflower. So I'm just going to... And what's nice about this, as I said before, is I'm using all the stems here. So I'm not right. really wasting any of the cauliflower. Right. And, uh, that looks good. I'm going to check the uh, cauliflower in the oven. Do. 
And then we can't forget, add the nutty flavor. This goes great with the scallops. A little bit of brown butter. And a little seasoning. You don't have to go too heavy because we have everything else seasoned. This is more of an accent of texture this and looks flavor. Good. This looks really good. Oh, those look beautiful. Perfect. Make sure I get all the chunks out of it. These are nicely coated. Beautiful. Just put those there and we'll plate this dish up. Puree is good. It's got the right consistency. We'll hold its shape. Grab a spoon. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this down on the bottom of the plate for the scallops. Ooh, that looks good. And now we're going to put the scallops on that. Simple, simple. Oh! This is good. My Easy. mouth is watering. All right. <laughs> we get the cauliflower all around here. I like to, it's a little hot. All right. Look at that color. Yeah, the cauliflower Beautiful. looks great. And season the cauliflower with whatever you'd like at home as well. And now to finish the dish, we have the tomatoes that I put in the oven at the very beginning, Whoa. which are now perfectly roasted. They kind of look like a... Sun-dried Doesn't tomatoes. Beautiful? Doesn't that look beautiful? Look at that. And this adds a little bit of acid, which is always nice with the scallops. So just one of each on there. Oh. These are really good on everything. I think we should put one little okay. tomato right on that white so it shows up. There we look go. Look at that. Oh. That's that. I mean, you put a little parsley on there if you'd like. Right. With green color. But besides that, it's a pretty uh, All we need is a uh, glass of white wine. Yes. That would be <laughs> lovely. We should get one of those. And do you have a name for this dish? <sighs> Scallops and cauliflower. Scallops. A la Michael. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're Look very welcome. That. It was a treat. Well, here we are again. And uh, as you can see, Chef Michael has prepared some delicious dishes for us. And I want to thank you very much for thank doing you for that. Me. It was fun. And uh, for those of you who have not yet been to Gray's, in Manchester, please do so. Graze, spelled how? G-R-A-Z-E. Like grazing. And uh, I think probably now we should probably ask Stephen to come out of the control room to join us because I believe he brought the wine. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I did great work, man. Thank you. <laughs> you guys... Uh... Fabulous show. It's nice to see you working together. It's yeah, it was great. It was difficult fun. to uh, to much. shoot sometimes, but um, we can shoot the piano player, but don't shoot the chef. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Our chef is a piano player. <laughs> so thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the show. And until next time, keep, keep on, on cooking. cooking. Cheers. Boom, 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 ba -da -da. Boom, boom, ba -da -da. Mama, it's Danger Man cooking.